Will there be a sequel to Netflix's Spencer Confidential? Mark Wahlberg doesn't consider himself a big sequel guy. In his 25-plus year acting career, the actor has made just three sequels, Ted 2, Transformers, The Last Night, and Daddy's Home 2. I always like to find the next new thing to do, and I always want to do the complete opposite of the last thing I did, he says. With his new Netflix action comedy, Spencer Confidential, the franchise question rises to the fore. Available via streaming, the film has Wahlberg taking on the role of the late author Robert B. Parker's flinty Boston private I Spencer, a much-loved character who, since his introduction in 1973, has appeared in nearly 50 books, the 1980s ABC series Spencer, for hire and a number of made-for-TV movies. Warning, spoilers ahead. Spencer Confidential ends with a classic tune and next time cliffhanger, as Wahlberg's P.I., having successfully cracked one conspiracy, catches whiff of the next mystery to solve. Watching a TV in a seafood shack with his newfound sidekick Hawk, Winston Duke, pal Henry, Alan Arkin, and girlfriend Sissy, Eliza Schlesinger, Spencer sees a news report about the arrest of a Boston Fire Battalion chief, with whom he went to high school, in connection with a suspicious deadly church fire, and the gears clearly start turning. Which immediately raises the question, with an apparent sequel all teed up, and so much more Spencer material to potentially draw upon, should we anticipate more Spencer movies to come? Well, maybe. For all of its ever-growing might in Hollywood, as of now Netflix doesn't have the deep well of branded intellectual property to leverage that the major studios do, and in Spencer Confidential the company clearly saw potential for a homegrown film franchise. I read a bunch of the Spencer books and thought it had the great possibility for a series or a franchise of movies, says producer Neil Moritz, who developed the project through his original film production company and brought it to Netflix, whose film chief, Scott Stuber, helped launch the Moritz-produced Fast and the Furious series when he was an executive at Universal. When Netflix was interested in doing it, I just thought it could be a great home for it, and hopefully it was something where we could make a number of them. Though no sequel is in the works as of yet, the key creative players in Spencer Confidential, including Wahlberg, Moritz, director Peter Berg, and co-star Duke, all say they're open to doing a follow-up. I welcome the opportunity, says Duke, whose portrayal of Hawk as a New Age UFC fighter deviates fairly dramatically from the swab mob enforcer of the books and TV series. The great thing about this group of characters is they don't back down, they don't shy away from a challenge. I think that will always lead them into more adventure, and adventure can come from anywhere. They're great representations of everyday people who have a lot of integrity and are willing to put it all on the line for the things they care about and the families they build. I think taking care of each other is a sentiment that we could all use right now. We've had a lot of discussions about where future installments can go, says Moritz. We'd all love to do it because we love the characters and the relationships. My favorite genre as a moviegoer is buddy cop action comedy movies. I'd love to see how those characters can grow. Wahlberg and Berg, whose previous collaborations include Lone Survivor, Deepwater Horizon and Patriot's Day, acknowledge they're interested in exploring the possibilities but will wait to see how audiences respond before pulling the trigger. Both have other projects already in the pipeline. Wahlberg, who will be back on the big screen this summer in the sci-fi thriller, Infinite, is attached to star in an adaptation of the video game, Uncharted, as well as the long-gestating $6 billion man on top of other film and TV projects he's producing. Berg is currently at work on a limited series on the opioid crisis called Painkiller, for Netflix, and is slated to direct a pair of documentaries on Rihanna and Chris Cornell. I'm a believer in one film at a time and see how that goes. Berg says. I do feel like Spencer Confidential lends itself well to a sequel, obviously given how we ended up the film. I hope the film is a success by whatever barometer Netflix uses. Doing another one is something that Mark and Spencer, co-screenwriter Brian Helgeland and I have all talked about, that we'd love to do it. With author Ace Atkins, on whose Wonderland Spencer Confidential is loosely based, continuing to write new Spencer novels since Parker's death in 2010, the amount of material to draw upon is only growing, but in the end, it may all come down to that Netflix barometer for success. While reviews for the film have been mixed, Times critic Kenneth Duran suggests he, for one, would be up for another spin, writing, a possible sequel is teased at the end of this adventure, and that wouldn't be a half-bad idea. Even with Netflix now revealing its most popular content on a daily basis, the company still closely guards specific viewership figures, so at best we'll have a fuzzy picture of exactly how big a hit Spencer proves to be. But given the large audiences other Netflix original films with big stars have drawn, 
including Will Smith's Bright, a sequel to which is in the works. Sandra Bullock's Bird Box and the Jennifer Aniston Adam Sandler comedy Murder Mystery, it's likely expected to pull in a lot of eyeballs. Sequel guy or not, Wahlberg says that if the audience has the appetite for it, he'd be only too happy to return to the world of Spencer, which is a deeply familiar one to the South Boston native. It was nice to be able to do something light and fun and switch it up and also be able to be at home, he says. Netflix has their own metrics and how they equate success. But if audiences really love the movie and they want to see another one and we get a guy like Brian Helgeland to write something really cool that can kind of stand on its own, then I'd be open to exploring that. Rick and Morty, new cryptic teaser, suggests season 4 announcement is close. Rick and Morty fans have been desperate for new episodes, and a recent cryptic teaser might suggest that we may be close to an announcement on when season 4 is returning. In a post on Twitter, the show shared a very bizarre 10-second clip, and fans are hoping that it means a premiere date for episode 6 might be around the corner. Just give us episode 6, one fan exclaimed, while another commented, everyone pauses everything they're doing in case it's something about the new episode. When you take this long to show the rest of a season, I don't think it's called a break anymore. I think it's just the beginning of a new season when it comes back. Normally came on in April anyway, lol, someone else wrote. I figured March or April at latest for the rest of the season, but without an announcement, I'm a little concerned. Of course, 10 episodes a season is not much. That's only 10 out of 52 weeks a year. Lots of waiting folks, one other said. So, whatever happened to no more delays? Seems like the fans were lied to. Hype or not the fans want what isn't being delivered, a fifth user commented. This things were kind of fun the first time, but waiting for the other half of the season makes this really frustrating to watch. At least release some info about the other half, one last fan tweeted. Not everyone is upset about the delay in Rick and Morty episodes, however, as some fans have defended the series from the angry commenters. All these folks be, ing about the next episodes are killing me. You'll be, until we got the first five. And about the quality of the first five, and rb, ing for more. I miss when Rick and Morty wasn't mainstream. The real hardcore, since day one fans appreciate it, one fan offered. Netflix cancels AJ and the Queen after one season, and fans are fired up. RuPaul recently announced that Netflix has cancelled AJ and the Queen after only one season, and fans of the show are really fired up over it. Taking to Twitter, RuPaul shared the news, revealing that the show would not return for season 2. Fans have since been lashing out over the show's cancellation, with one tweeting, This is really disappointing. It was a very entertaining series and left a big cliffhanger at the end. How will we ever know what happens? Gutted. I love this show, was so looking forward to see what happened next. Bad decision Netflix, someone else exclaimed, while another fan wrote, what? This is a travesty. We need a petition, a protest, anything. We need more AJ and the Queen. Scroll down to see more reactions from fans who are upset that the show has been cancelled. Divorce court, host judge, Lynn Toller exits after 13 years, replaced by Judge Faith Jenkins. Judge Lynn Toller is stepping down from the divorce court bench after 13 years. On Thursday, Toller, who has served as the show's judge since 2006, announced in a video shared to her Twitter account that she would be leaving the beloved reality TV series. She will be replaced by Judge Faith Jenkins. I couldn't wait any longer because the news is coming out and I wanted you to hear it from me, Toller began in the clip. I've left divorce court. We parted ways. I had 13 great year. It was time to move on. They found a replacement. Judge Faith, she continued. She's good looking and she's smart and she's capable and I think she'll take divorce court to another level. Toller went on to encourage fans to embrace Jenkins, starred on Judge Faith, which ran for four years, from 2014 to 2018. I remember when I took over for Judge Mably and Ephraim, she said. There was a lot of consternation and people got cranky because people don't like new things. But I'm saying give her a chance, because she's really good at what she does. She's going to be different. She's going to be good. In the video, Toller also revealed that she is going to be moving forward with some new things and that fans will be hearing from me, sooner rather than later is the plan. She did not, however, reveal what her big plans may be. I want to thank Divorce Court, I want to thank all my executive producers, I want to thank the production people, the crew, everybody for those 13 fabulous years, she said. And I want to especially wish Judge Faith all the best. I have faith in you. According to Deadline, which first reported news of Toller stepping down and being replaced, Jenkins will take on her duties beginning in July of this year.
We are confident that Judge Faith's energy and passion for each case will build on the legacy of this program created by the exceptional talents of Judge Mablian and Judge Lynn Toller, Stephen Brown, EVP of Programming for Fox Television Stations, said. In her own statement, Jenkins said that she began watching Divorce Court in law school, saying that joining the show is quite surreal. My legal expertise combined with my personal life experience, including years of dating in the world of social media and technology, provides me a unique perspective that will inform my empathy and judgment for many of the issues couples raise on the show, she added. Grey's Anatomy star Ellen Pompeo reacts to Justin Chambers' exit in lengthy message to fans. Ellen Pompeo is speaking out after Grey's Anatomy aired its farewell episode to Justin Chambers and his on-screen counterpart, Dr. Alex Karev, Thursday night. In a lengthy post shared to her Instagram account Friday morning, Pompeo, who portrays Dr. Meredith Grey, shared a video of throwback clips from the ABC medical drama and thanked the fans and those who worked behind the camera while also adding her input on the way in which Alex was written off. Hi here, I go again. Thank you. Pompeo began the post. You are truly the best most passionate most loyal fans anyone could ever ask for. Because of you we got to make great TV, because of you we got to make television history. I say often life is hard and thank God it is because like I tell my kids, it shows us what we are made, of how strong we really are and let's face it, she continued. Without the lows there would be no dancing it out or celebrating this incredible experience we call life. The actress, one of only a handful of season one characters remaining, went on to thank executive producer Debbie Allen and the writers for giving Alex Karev the best send-off and Shonda Rhimes for creating the most amazing character. Although Alex's send-off has been controversial among fans, who felt that him saying goodbye via a series of letters was out of character and undermined his character development, Pompeo said that to her, for Karev to go back to the beginning, was the best possible storyline. It pays homage to those incredible first years and the incredible cast, that created a foundation so strong that the show is still standing, she explained.